as a real estate agent, it is only right that I make a video that's talking about all the things that real estate agents do and why we are invaluable to this process, whether you are buying or selling. Hey, it's the Artsy Realtor here. My name is Glenise Johnson and I'm an artist and a realtor serving in the greater Birmingham area. And I wanna take a little time to talk about us agents and what we do, why we're valuable, um, the ins and outs um, for buyers as well as sellers. So let's start with buyers first. So for buyers, what all are we doing? So first off, of course, we're helping you search for properties. Now, here's the thing, we're in the age of technology and uh, of course, at this point, you can really find your house on your own. There's so there's so many, you know, uh, home search platforms that, are, that exist now. And I'm not gonna sit here and act like I didn't close deals on listings where my buyers found it and uh, I helped them put in an offer for it. I'm not gonna lie about that. However, what we have that is not readily available to the public is the multiple listing service, which is the MLS. Agents, we pay hundreds of dollars a year to have our accounts active on this site. Um, it is a very accurate tool because all of the agents in the entire area that that particular MLS covers, um, the agent, we're putting those listings into that system. We are required by law to put those listings into the system. And so you're getting, you're getting, I guess, this information from really from the horse's mouth because the listings that pull up on the MLS come directly from the agent. They're not filtered like what you get with Realtor.com and Zillow. They're kind of filtered through that system. Um, you're getting it directly from the agent and from that, you know, from the listing, I guess the listing manager, so to speak, because the agent is managing that listing. And so there are notes on there. They're not uh, visible to the public from one agent to the other telling about certain details. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I've had a client send me a link to a listing that they saw on Realtor.com or on Zillow. And, you know, they said, oh, I'm interested in this house, interested in this house. And I look it up on the MLS and it's no longer available because it looks like it's active or, you know, on the market, you know, on that platform. But it's either truthfully either contingent, which means that it's under contract with another buyer, which means another buyer had their offer accepted and those two parties are moving towards closing or it's been taken completely off the market. Um, that's a lot, That's I see that a lot for rentals. When I um, look up rentals, people will see it, cause you'll see like Trulia.com will have a lot of rental listings. Um, I know Zillow will have a lot of rental listings and a couple are like lesser known like platforms that have rental listings. And you'll see them be like, oh, this, this rental listing is here, I wanna check this out. And I go through the MLS, child ain't even on the market. It's not, it's it's not up. That listing is, is a super old. And a lot of times these websites, they're not updated, you know, so to have the most accurate information. So that MLS system is really, really invaluable. And we, we pay the money, we pay to be on there for a reason. Again, we can communicate. And one thing that we can do on that system is set up alerts. So unlike with Realtor.com, unlike with Zillow, unlike with all these platforms, you're seeing listings that are already on the market. By the time you've seen it, if it's been on the market, especially if it's in a good market, you know, if it's been on the market for at least 48 hours, it's probably already got five offers on it if it's in a good area. What we can see on the MLS system is we can set up alerts to see things that are um, about to be put on the market or an incoming soon status. I know some platforms outside of MLS will showcase coming soon, but we can see, we can set up alerts for those things. So we can get email notifications when those things are either about to come on the market or on the market. Um, and the MLS platform also allows us to really pull um, a lot of really, really good data to really study the market, see what is going on and how things are selling and the rate that they're selling and the price that they're selling for. We can use that to pull data in order to um, do, com do comps um, for, for buyers to make sure that they're not paying for uh, or offering on a house that's not reasonably priced. Same on the other side for sellers as well. So that listing service is a huge benefit to us. So we, we use that, you know, that's our, that's in our pocket to use to help, um, help our clients through that. So we help search properties. That's one thing we do. Another thing we do is that we negotiate the contract and we guide you to make, you know, help make educated decisions. Again, I think I've said this in a previous video, but we are not not to tell you what to do our job is not to tell you what to do you're the one making these decisions so we kind of use again we use all that data we use those comps we use our knowledge of the um, real estate law to kind of let you know what your options are and help you make 
um, the best uh, decision. And we also utilize that information, utilize that knowledge to negotiate through the contra contract. We know it can and can be done. We know ultimately, you know, we're looking at, we can kind of have a little bit of a biased um, perspective, aerial perspective of everything. You may be a little bit more emotionally involved in this because as a buyer, this is your life. You know what I'm saying? You're getting ready to buy a house. We can look at what's going on with the seller side and, and the conversations that we have with that agent and look at what's going on with you and figure out, okay, how can I bridge my buy, my client's needs with what you know these sellers are unwilling to bend on, right? Because we we want to perceive what's going to be beneficial, especially in the most offer situation, especially um, in the seller's market where they got a backup offer and we want to help you get your needs met, but we also based on what we perceive, don't want to rock the boat too much. So we make sure we continue, we're continuously moving um, to a common ground and able to get a win-win for both situations. So we work hard to balance that. Um, and it's, sometimes it's not easy, but we're constantly thinking like that to help you progress further and further to closing, okay? So another thing agents do is that we connect you with vendors, okay? And I gotta ask this, you think about this, when's the last time you talked to a termite guy? When is the last time you talked to a plumber? You know, some by by just default, you may happen to have one in the family, but if you don't have one that you know, that's a friend that you know works in that profession, when's the last time you talked to one? You know, and you wouldn't, until you had a job that required that professional, you wouldn't have one, you wouldn't talk to one until you Google, Google them. Now, in this state, in Alabama, we're a buyer beware state, and you have to do inspections. So that means you gotta gather professionals to do those inspections. And it's probably one of the most important tasks you gotta do in the process, considering that once you close, that's it. So you wanna make sure you have really, really good professionals that are heavily vetted. And our job is to, you know, we can connect you with those vendors. Now, we cannot give you someone to choose because we cannot be liable for those choices. But we have done enough connections and made enough connections with enough professionals that we've worked with in the past to get, get you a, a good directory of available vendors for you to vet through, for you to see their prices and their services and the reviews, see what works for you, and ultimate, ultimately be able to make that decision to have your non-biased professional um, inspectors out there to look at that property for you. So we provide those as, as well as lenders, home warranty specialists, um, title companies, you need a title company to orchestrate the closing. You know, we usually are part heavily partnered with those uh, companies, with those organizations to have that stuff ready, right? Um, so we make sure we have those people in pocket. So when you're ready and you need those vendors and you don't know where to go, we got that for you. So in addition to that, it kind of leads me to the next thing we do is that we're basically the project managers of the whole deal. So again, we're providing you with vendors, we're negotiating your deal, we're communicating with the agent who's communicating with their clients. We're doing all these things and we're trying to make sure everything on the checklist of the contract is being done. So we know we're keeping track of, of deadlines and dates. You know, you got a 10 day inspection period. We went on the contract two days ago, we got eight days left. So let's see where we are with that. We're gonna constantly be checking that. Checking, you know, we're, we can't really be too deeply involved with your lending process, but we can definitely talk to a loan originator and be like, hey, what's up? What are they, is there anything they need? Anything I can help with? We can run interference if something's going on. If you need to make some calls just to verify employment, we can jump in and do that. You know, anything that we need to help bring that process along, we're going to do that. We're gonna be the project managers. Um, you know, definitely communicating with the title company if there's anything that's needed. Again, running interference, checking in with all these different com components of the transaction to make sure everything's running smoothly. So I haven't gone over everything, but that's ultimately, you know, the things that are being done for the buyer. And I also wanna point out, consider the fact that when you're going through a transaction, you may still be someone with a full-time job and, and who's employed in a completely different industry. For your agent, your deal is, is, our, is our job. That is our full-time job. For, for a lot of us, sometimes we're, we're, we're dual career um, agents, but for a lot of us, that is our job. So we can devote so much more time to being able to make sure your deal goes through smoothly. So it's important to have someone who can be dedicated to every single detail you know, on your side to be able to do that, right? So, as far as sellers go, 
Now, sellers is funny because a lot of times there's a little bit of, of uh, what's the word? It's touchy. It's touchy. And ultimately, it's because sellers are the ones that are actually paying for uh, agent services. Um, the way it works is that if a, if a seller, who's a, a homeowner who's selling a house, connects with an agent um, to list their home, they negotiate a percentage of commission. That agent takes that percentage once you know it's closing and they split that with the buying agent as a way to it's, a, it's used to market to get um buyers to show the house to their clients and bring those buyers um to the table in order to go under contract so that's how they're they're paid so you typically typically not all the time but typically buyer services are free um, unless you have a particular agent who's gotten to a point where they want to ensure a certain percentage and a lot of times uh, that percentage is not always offered. It's usually 6% and split 3 and 3 but a lot of times um, it could be 5 and split 2 and a half and 2 and a half. and if you know you're you have an agent who is has a strict three percent you know they may ask that you pay that additional five percent which may not you know be as much um it just depends um but yeah typically buyer services are free but we're not working for free because we're getting paid by the seller so that's why i can be a little touchy because they're the ultimately the ones footing the bill so it can be, you know, they want to make sure they're getting their money's worth. And of course, a lot of times there are a lot of sellers um, that may have gone through bad experiences when they sold a house before and maybe had an agent that didn't do all that they thought they should have been doing. And so a lot of times, you know, you have certain people that want to sell the home on their own and, you know, think that they can just kind of pocket that money and be able to do it, you know, and be better off. But a lot of times, you know, data shows us that most of the time, if not all of the time, if you're selling your house by yourself, you're losing money and you're losing time and you're doing way more work than you probably would have anticipated. Um, because a lot goes into um, getting a listing sold, getting a house out there into the internet, out there into to the public to let people know that it's available and negotiating it to get sold in a way that, that is um, beneficial for you, right? So again, agents on behalf of the sellers, we study the market. We have, again, gone through, you know, hundreds of dollars of training and pre-licensing courses. Um, and we have that, that MLS uh, uh, platform that we also pay hundreds of dollars for a year in order to really pull in um, really good data to showcase what's going on in the market surrounding your house. So that we can as assist you in pricing it in a way that will ensure that it gets sold. Because there are about three things that can impact a house getting sold especially in this market. And it's uh, condition, price, and a lot of times location. Um, if it's not, if it's on the market and it's not selling, those are three of the reasons that it's probably not. It's either overpriced, the conditions is just completely whack and you probably need to come down a little bit more to accommodate that, or the location is just not, nah, it's just not a place, you know, anyone really wants to be. Um, so, we take all that into consideration and we study the market to make sure that we're catching that and 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 i guess moving accordingly if we know where if you know your house is in a, a great area but you got a lot of conditions on the house that either you don't have the money to fix or you're just not willing to then we're gonna we're going to counsel you and be like hey you may have to come down to accommodate that so we can still make sure it gets sold on time so we do different things like that we're gonna work with you and come up and maybe even come up with different strategies if you just kind of really want to get a certain profit we may say okay let's start here at a certain price point and if it's not working in a couple of days we're gonna we gotta change this to make sure we can get your house under contract so we're gonna do that we're gonna pull from the market and do all of that study and bring in all that data so we make sure your house we're pricing that house right because a lot of times if you see a, a sign in the yard for a person who's selling their home on their own if you go back there a couple of weeks later it's still there um, because a lot of times, you know, those a lot of times those signs, of course, they don't, you know, they're not gonna have the price on the, on the sign. But a lot of times, that's the only marketing that may be on that sign. They put that sign in the yard. They may have posted a listing on their social media. Um, maybe put a, something on Craigslist, and that's about it. But we have the means to market way more extensively. When I say extensively, like we have the MLS, which is giving out alerts to hundreds of agents to let them know 
that your house is on the market. And if your house has the criteria that they've already put in that search on behalf of their buyers, that alert's gonna come up as soon as we put it in the MLS and they'll be able to bring buyers your way, right? So we've got that. We've got social media. We've got professional pages that we're building up that have you know hundreds of thousands of viewers um, and that will see that. We can do paid advertisement. Um, YouTube, the whole reason I do this channel is not only to help first time buyers, but it's also to, I'm, I'm putting out content that will, that works well with the algorithm so that I get, it gets more viewership. So when I decided to put a listing and considering that this channel is dedicated to, you know, helping to educate first time buyers, people that subscribe to this channel, and cause I only allow organic subscription, I'm not going to be buying subscribers or buying followers, just organic subscription. That means that the content it resonates with that person in some way. Either they have aspirations to buy a house or getting ready to jump into buy a house. I put a listing, there are buyers that are already interested. You have platforms like that. You know, we have a whole bunch of different things. When we put that, that listing in the MLS, uh, MLS platform, it's gonna go out to Zillow and to Realtor and to all these other platforms because those things are connected to the MLS. Granted, they don't get all the information, but they are connected to MLS in order to get that listing and let it be seen. A lot of times if you're just putting it on Zillow by itself, Zillow has an algorithm as well to where certain listings are gonna be more seen than others. So there's so many things that go into that when it comes to marketing that we have. We've got a professional uh, photographer to take really beautiful pictures to make it look as um, as appealing on the internet so people wanna come out to see your house. If you're just putting a sign in the yard and just kinda throwing a couple of listings on your social media, of course, you go back there a couple of weeks, it's still gonna be there. So you're losing time. A lot of times, if you're trying to work out the deal on your own, you know, you may miss a couple things because you haven't studied real, real estate law. You don't know all the things that kind of go into the transaction. You haven't sold it in a long time. And there may be something you miss and you could be leaving money on the table. And a lot of times, um, your your agent that's, you know, managing your listing, they can hold an open house for you and, or, and be more organized with uh, the buyers that come in and can do, you know, adequate correspondence to make sure you're keeping in touch with those buyers that are potentially interested. Um, they're also the project managers of your deal once you're under contract, making sure that they're negotiating on your behalf to make sure that your needs are met. And consider the fact that a lot of times, more times than not, I think about maybe a good 80, 90% of people that are gonna be looking at your house that are interested buyers, they're gonna be represented. And again, like I said, we don't work for free. We're working for a percentage. So a lot of times you're going to come in contact with a buyer who has an agent who is going to be coming to you saying, hey, um, when we see you don't have an agent with you, are you going to be willing to pay that 3%? Because again, it's usually 6%. Usually it's negotiable. That's usually the base, you know, that, that I see all the time. It's usually 6%. It can be any percentage, but it's usually 6%. And they're gonna be asking you for that, just that three. Not even, they see you don't, you don't have an agent, so they're just gonna be asking for their 3%. So consider the fact that if you wanna get your house sold and you're selling it to a buyer that's got an agent and they're asking you to pay their 3%, consider the fact that you end up paying for realtor services anyway. However, you are negotiating your deal by yourself and you are and you're negotiating against um, your uh, buyer who has a higher professional that you are paying for, that you are paying for, who is negotiating against your interests. What? It doesn't make sense. You're ultimately gonna end up paying for, for, for real estate services anyway. You might as well go ahead and do the extra 3% and make sure you are represented as well. Again, most of the time without using an agent, you leave money on the table. You're leaving money on the table, you're spending more time than you should have to, and you're doing way more work than you anticipated. Ultimately, you do make more money when you add an agent on who's who's knowledgeable in what's going on in the market and can negotiate a little bit better to make sure your needs are met and you're getting top dollar for your house. So those are all the ways that those are the things that agents do and how we're invaluable to this process. We ultimately wanna help these transactions go smoothly. We wanna get sellers more money in their pocket. We wanna make sure buyers' needs are completely met, uh, well, as met as they can possibly be in the midst of compromising back and forth. So 
Check out last week's video where I kind of answer the question of whether it's ever a good or bad time to buy real estate. I hear that question from time to time, and so I kind of wanted to shed some light on it and I guess essentially bust a myth, so to speak. But the link to that is in the description. As always, my calendar is there as well if you want to pick my brain and maybe uh, have a quick consultation so we can answer some questions. If anything is ever confusing or you have anything um, to ask about your unique situation. So I'm always happy to answer any questions but that's all I have for today y'all much love take care and I will talk to you later